Hi everyone. Now we are going to learn about the phase contrast microscope, which is one of the types of uh, microscope. The phase contrast microscope is a special microscope that enables the viewer to see the transparent protoplasmic components without staining and without killing. And this phase contrast microscope was originally developed by Mr. Prodigenic in the year 1933 and hence we also call this microscope as Jernic microscope. And for this he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1953 that is for the discovery of phase contrast principle in physics. The phase contrast microscope is going to be considered as a ideal instrument for observation of living protozoans and other transparent microbes without staining. Coming to the principle, the main principle involved in this microscopy is light waves which are having a variable character for frequency and amplitude. And on the other side, the human eyes cannot receive when two light rays have same frequency and amplitude but different phases. To understand this amplitude and frequency first, we should understand what happens to the rays when they pass through a transparent object. Coming to the principles, light rays pass through a transparent object are going to be emerge out in two different ways that is direct and diffractive. What is meant by direct rays? The rays that pass through the object in a straight line are going to be called as a direct rays or unaltered or undiffracted rays. Then what is meant by diffracted rays? The rays that are bent and slow down as they pass through due to the differences in density of the medium are going to be called as diffracted rays. And this relationship between the rays that is made use of the phase contrast microscope. What is that relationship? That is a relationship between the direct and the diffracted rays are going to be used in the phase contrast microscope. And this phenomena of coincidence and the interface are used in a phase contrast microscope. What does this coincidence and the interference mean? If the direct rays and the diffractor rays of an object can be brought into the same phase, that is the crust of both the light rays coincide with each other, which result in increase in amplitude due to the sum of both converged rays that is going to be called as coincidence. So as a result of the increased amplitude, the objects look very bright in the frame. So that means because of the coincidence, the object is going to be appear bright in the phase contrast microscope. Whereas on the other hand, if we see the interface, that means if the direct and the diffractor rays are out of the phase, that means the crust of one wave coincides with the truck, not with the another crust. Then it is said to be the reverse phase and their amplitudes cancel each other and the object looks darker due to this interface property. So both these phenomena that is coincidence and the interference are going to be used in the phase contrast microscope. That means when the light rays are going to pass through a transparent object, some rays are going to be have the retardation by one quarter wavelength, that is one fourth of the wavelength. And this is going to be called as phase shift. But the shape, this phase shift will not cause any change in the amplitude, thus the objects appear transparent. The quarter wavelength, that is one fourth wavelength of the phase shift, is utilized in this phase contrast microscope to create the image contrast. So, this is the overall principle behind the phase contrast microscope. 
Then coming to the structure of the phase contrast microscope. The phase contrast microscope is an ordinary microscope that is ordinary bright field microscope with two additional plates. One is going to be considered as annular diaphragm and other one is going to be the phase shifting plate. So here you are going to have. So these two plates are enable some of the image forming rays to be phase shifted with respect to the others. The annular diaphragm LO, this is going to be attached in a place of iris diaphragm to the ordinary condenser. And this attachment is going to allow only a ring of light to pass through the condenser. So here you can see a ring of light that pass through the condenser and then to the object. So here is the condenser and here is the specimen. And each object you requires different size of annulus according to its numerical aperture. So depending upon the numerical aperture, we are going to take the different types of the uh, annuli. Next, the second one is the phase shifting plate, which is going to be attached at the back of, so here you can see here, the phase shifting plate. This is going to be attached at the back of the objective. So our objective is going to possess this phase shifting plate or phase ring, which is composed of a disc of glass having circular trough etched in it and of such a depth that light after passing through it creates a phase difference of a quarter of wavelength as compared with the light from the rest of the plate. This plate is going to be of, as I said, decreases the phase of light of a quarter of wavelength travels through it. So that point is very important that we discussed in the principle. In the phase contrast microscope, when this single ray of light or the single ray of instant light falls on your specimen, two rays are going to develop. One of these is going to be the direct or transmitted light ray from annular diaphragm and passing through the object and is focused on the phase shifting plate. The phase shifting plate either delays or advances this ray. So either it is going to make a delay or advances this ray. And the second ray as a result of passing through the margin of the specimen is not striking the phase shifting element therefore its phase is not affected so as usual it is going to be fall when these two beams that is direct this is direct yellow color and this is diffracted unite they are not in phase and the phase differences become apparent two sets of rays emitting that from the same point of specimen written to the same point in the image having phase differences with respect to one another and interfere to produce variation in intensity of illumination and therefore contrast in the image form. That is whatever the image is going to be formed, we are going to have the contrast. Depending upon the phase shifting element that we are using, the specimen may appear lighter again as the dark background or darker again as the light background. So this is how we are going to have the total construction of this uh, phase contrast microscope. So here you can see the image of the phase contrast microscope. So where the background is going to be the darker and you can see the uh, object as a brighter manner. So this is how. Then moving to the advantages of the phase contrast microscope. Phase contrast microscope are mostly used for examining the intracellular components of living cells of relatively high resolution. So when compared to the other, so we are going to have the uh, high resolution images of the living cell. For example, the dynamic motility of mitochondria, mitotic chromosomes and vacuoles can be followed and from with these optics and this 
is also going to be useful and valuable for studying the living and stained cells and widely used in applied and the practical biological studies. Even the greatest benefits that we derive from the invention of the space contrast microscope is its everyday use in the research and teaching lab for observing cells in a more revealing way. And this is also used for the detection of bacterial components such as endospores, inclusion bodies which contains uh, containing uh, polybeta hydroxybutyrate, polymetaphosphate, sulfur and other substances. Even this is going to be widely used for studying the unstained cells in wet mounds and hanging job method. So these are the few advantages of the phase contrast microscope. Then moving to the disadvantages or some sort of the limitations. So this phase contrast microscope is only suitable for observing the single cells when they are going to be present in the thin layer. That means if the organisms are thick and if the preparation is a somewhat a thick in manner, we cannot observe them through this microscope. In addition, it was optical handicaps result in loss of resolution and the image suffers from the interfering and shading produced where short changes in the refractive index occurs. Images may appear gray or green if white or green lights are going to be used respectively resulting in poor photomicrograph. And one more drawback is annuli or rings that whatever the phase shifting element and the, uh, what we call as annular diaphragm that we are using, annular ring, are going to limit the aperture to some extent which is having the capacity of decreasing the resolution. The shade of occurs with larger particles results in a steady reduction of contrast moving from the center of the object towards its edges. So these are the several differences that we are going to see of, big, uh, of the phase contrast microscope. So then here are the images that are going to be formed by different microscopes. So this is the image that was formed by bright field microscope, dark field microscope that we discussed in the previous videos. And in this video, we have seen the images formed by the phase contrast microscope. And this is going to be the image that is formed by fluorescent microscope, which we will discuss in the consecutive video. So this is all about the phase contrast microscope. And we will discuss about the fluorescent, that is, or the fluorescent microscope in the consecutive videos. Thank you.